Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about the tips, tricks and various related time management skills which can help you succeed in your examinations. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are continuing with the chapter 1 of the set B and picking up some of the remaining questions from here and we'll be discussing again as usual the best way to tackle them. But by now, I think we should have already got the clarity since we have covered one set uh, with all 40 questions that what exactly to do. But however, we'll look forward to discuss many questions as a part of this playlist to make sure that we have the complete understanding of almost everything what we need. So the very next question we have is question number seven and question number seven says which of the following is most likely to be an example of testing or tester uh, using gender skills when testing. Again a quick recap uh, when you talk about the gender skills of the testers we have discussed that how does their technical skill, how does their past experience, their domain knowledge, their participation in different activities matters in order to make the testing successful. So their qualities of uh, performing different activities throughout the life cycle is very very important and uh, their competencies in terms of their technical skills and soft skills are really the contributing element throughout this particular session so let's get started and we have the very first option here saying the testers deep knowledge of variety of computer games meant that they got on well with one of the developers who was also into gaming uh, I, I don't think that basically makes any sense because hiring a tester does not mean that the tester will be able to do development because tester's job is to test the system and here we are trying to be very very layman level to you know create those basic conflicts that uh, do we understand a tester is someone who is responsible to use its past experience to test the system but does not solve the problem of developers in the organization so option a is conflicting and that's not how a general generic skill of testing can be utilized here let's look at the option b option b says uh, the tester was a former pilot and uh, was better able to understand the acceptance criteria for a helicopter control system i think this would make sense because this is where the domain knowledge comes into picture and given that someone has been uh, a pilot in the past could easily understand that what are the key acceptance criteria and tomorrow this pilot becomes a test engineer uh, would be a great source of information for this person to use its past knowledge to apply during the testing or understanding the acceptance criteria of a helicopter system, right? That makes sense. Now let's go to option C. Option C says uh, the testers previously worked as a programmer and used their skills in this area to better communicate with the business analyst. Two important things in this option. Number one, this particular tester was working as a programmer, so the entire past experience is about development. And second thing they are saying, had an effective communication with the business analyst, that's good, but as a developer. So it's not that what is going to help me to build the generic skills of a tester and call him as one of the good candidate of tester. Same way the option D, option D says, the tester was very careful not to make mistakes when they uh, methodically generated test cases prior to starting their exploratory testing session. Now look at this option. First of all, this is a chapter one question, but can bring concepts from the chapter four. From the chapter four, we already know that exploratory testing is a test technique, which basically talks about executing the test cases without writing them or writing dynamically high level test cases. And that's pretty much which basically describes that this is contradicting. Methodically writing test cases, which is very, very formal approach, whereas exploratory is an informal technique of testing the system. So either way, it conflicts. Of course, writing test cases methodically is a general skills of the tester, but not for exploratory testing, because in exploratory testing, we don't do that. And with this particular understanding, you would be able to conclude that what should be the right answer, what should not be, but this is the level of detail you need to step into at any point of time in order to conclude with your right answer. Okay, so put together, the right answer for this particular question is B, that is the tester was a farmer pilot and was better able to understand the acceptance criteria for the helicopter control system is an example how genetic skills of testers matter to the success of the project or to the success of testing. 
Okay, so this is what we are trying to convey through this playlist. So let's go to the next question. The next question is question number eight. And here we are talking about which of the following is an advantage of whole team approach. Again, all we have to do is recall what we remember about the whole team approach. We work together with the developers. We try to understand each other. Sometimes we can work in pairs. Whole team approach uh, allowed people to have uh, basic skills in every single member so that the dependency on any person can be removed and anybody can pick anybody's task and start working on that or probably continue so this was introduced by extreme programming and generally followed in agile methodology right given that let's go with the option option a here says that it allows team member to take on any role at any time okay that's something very crucial and very particular to talk about because this is a little tricky option and uh, sometimes may have a variety of meanings for that. The whole team approach generally allows any team member with a requisite skill, okay? So it's not necessary that when you're talking about uh, taking any role, see, there's a difference between role and responsibility, and we don't want to conflict between that. A person is hired with a role, but may have variety of responsibilities. For example, a developer is a role, but responsibility can be to do unit testing as well, right? Along with development. And that is where this option looks a little tricky in terms of consolidating as the right answer because they're not talking about responsibilities. However, the whole team approach discusses about the responsibility, not the role, okay? There's a business analyst, there's a developer, there's a tester, there's a designer. We work together, okay? And responsibilities can be shared, but not the role. I cannot become the developer. Developer cannot become the tester. Okay, so that's that's where you should mind the words, and they sometimes can be very important. Let's go with option B. Option B says it can it only needs a single team to support the complete development of project. Uh, not necessarily when it comes to different teams. Uh, of course, uh, we may have like performance testing team, security testing team, or API team, or maybe database team. So it's just not that there's a single team. Okay. Whole team approach means that we have representative from different segments working together, but it does not mean there's only one team which is required to work here. So again, you can understand that uh, there could be multiple teams for different contributions, but uh, it's just that the whole team approach will work together, okay? Option C says it embeds uh, business representative alongside developers into the same team. Now, embeds business representative is a little tricky word here. Because, of course, we do expect uh, business representatives to work together, but the whole team approach does not expect every team member to be involved in every important decision. Okay, for, for example, like there is no need for business representative to be involved in every technical decision that does not affect the business outcome. So right here, if you notice the uh, business representative alongside with the developer, in the same team. So it's not necessary that business uh, representative will be embedded into the team. They can be available to contribute to the overall perspective. And finally, the option D says, that is, it generates a team synergy that benefits the entire project. That totally makes sense because it creates a synergy. That's one of the benefit of having whole team approach being conducted. And that is where uh, we have a better trust, better collaboration, better, communication among the team members and uh, that what basically brings the value of whole team approach to the entire organization when, work, when working together. So that's uh, critically important and uh, should be taken as one of the relevant options. However, if you notice here that different options had really, you know, different context to talk about and sometimes they could be very, very different in their own approach, right? So put together, the right answer for this particular question is D, that is, it generates a team synergy that benefits the entire project, is seen as one of the advantage of the whole team approach. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to com comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.